I am back on the road again and it feels good. I am still in Name. It's rainy. It's a lot colder than before. It's around 22 degrees. Before it was 36, 38 degrees. It's windy. The perfect weather to keep going, to make distance. Let's go. I have now covered 850 kilometers. So the end of the first half is in sight. Day after day, I cycle through a new landscape. My emotions are also different from day to day. I have arrived at a point where the roads reflect loneliness. They give little inspiration and I'm urgently looking for a new story. This is by far the saddest house I've ever seen. Abandoned one. You see many of these in the countryside. But this is literally already taken over by nature so you can see that it's a while ago that the owner of this house passed away. As always, I'm looking for a story. Maybe I'm trying too hard or looking too deep. Am I not just a story? After all, it's my bike ride and the viewers look through my eyes. Which is a crazy idea sometimes. What should I show them? What do they want to see? What role do I play in this? Ah! I'm proud of my bike, which I now call my second partner. And until today, the bike has held up strong. Strangely enough, you build a bond with something that is just a bicycle. So today morning, I praise my luck that the first 800 kilometers, nothing went wrong with my bike. And now suddenly, well, it's not even a bike, it's actually worse, it's the wreck. The wreck bent down, it just literally on the wheel, oh fuck. Luckily, the carrier could be attached again with a spare screw. What a lifesaver. Let's go. I like Guangyang city so far because they have bicycle roads. Not many places have bicycle roads along a road like this next to me. Usually I have to take that road. They are not the best well-maintained roads, but they are bicycle roads. So this road goes 10% up the steepness. At the beginning of my journey, after I think 50 meters, I would have walked the other, other part. But now after more than 850 kilometers, my legs got so used to it that I can calmly climb this mountain without feeling too tired. I cycle into the area of Yosu. Here we are, Yosu. And no, I don't go to the city, but I stay on the west side of Yosu. And unlike other remote areas, I found much less convenient stores and hotels here. The occasional homestay, but that's it then. While cycling through the area, I sometimes wonder what it's like for people to live in such remote areas. With few facilities, and sometimes not even a small supermarket. What is it like growing up here? Today my body just wasn't feeling right. A bit weak, cold at times, digestion problems. Today my body is weaker than usual. These days are there, but instead of taking a rest, I cycle tens of kilometers extra, still looking for that one story. Towards the end of the evening, I arrive in a small village, here to be precise. But damn, what a nice place here. Fortunately, there is a small quiet beach where I can place my tent to explore this village the next day. Good morning, guys. I had a terrible night, as usual in the tent. You see these rocks here? small stones I could feel every single one of them pouring my back my belly even though I'm sleeping on this mat full of air and the sleeping bag is not enough anyhow at least I slept around four hours weather is good it was supposed to rain this morning well it doesn't I'm super happy with that because if you have to pack everything that's wet that's not fun. It's nothing less than a normal small Korean village. But that's exactly what I see the beauty in it. A glimpse into history. When you see many of these, then you know that you are in a very old Korean town. All the harmonies walk with this. It's sad, it's cute. It's nice to see at the same time. It's weird, it's like it's so typical Korea. I've only seen this in Korea where all the harmonies just walk with a baby carriage around the town. And in this town, there are many of them. Not surprisingly, the average age 
that's still here in this town is probably above 70 somewhere. But what surprises me is that they are all still working. Like young gods. Just working the fields, working the house, working the town. They do a lot of work on that age. If I imagine the Netherlands, I just imagine the, older, the elderly in an elderly house. Or people just taking care of them in general. But here they seem so independent and able to, well, with their <laughs> children's carriage, to walk around and do some work. Survive. Respect. What's also cool is that this town is very old, but they have a very new art kill, is how they call it. Just the main street has a lot of art, as you can see. The village has everything that makes it a Korean village. The old people hard at work and like to walk around with prams or the tougher version, the quads. The harbor with private fishing boats, every piece of land used for agriculture and let's not forget the empty houses of deceased residents. The youth are, of course, far from home. Check this out, sometimes the houses are so old and badly maintained that you just seriously don't know whether it's abandoned or not. In this case, I think it's abandoned, but people still use the space to put the crops. Or maybe not. I think it's abandoned. Let's check it out. This is so cool. You don't see this often, but there's an actual well here, a very old one. It's amazing exploring these little towns. I love it. Small gem, small gem. I seriously still have a hard time not feeling sad about this. People die, we all know that. But then, where they used to live their life is just being left behind like this. It's not a Korean country town without the old tree. Every old village has I think an old I tree. Found the old tree. Happy me. I wonder, will they put a new sign every new year? 301, 302, 303. And the question is, how old is this village? Is the tree older than the village? But I found a tree. There's always a tree. Always. It's so funny when you see a Hanado Marte or the Nongjob Bank, then you know, okay, you're in a countryside, local town. It's pretty much the only Mart and bank that wants to put their business in the local towns. People, this village may have already been ridden off, but for me it's a small gem where I'm only too happy to take a walk. This is how I realize that the story has been found and I can quietly continue my bike ride. This time it will be sleeping under a bridge to prepare the island adventure. Hey guys, I arrived at my spot where I will sleep for the night. I'm very close to Sodokto where I'll go tomorrow, a very special island. You will see in the next video. And I met these young children. Inzae? Oh. Annyeong! Bye bye! Adieu!